Welcome to One on One. I'm Steve Adubato. It is my pleasure to introduce for the first time here on One on One, Amy Herman. She is the author of Visual Intelligence and also the president and founder of The Art of Perception. Good to have you, Amy. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Visual Intelligence is? Visual Intelligence is the ability to differentiate between seeing and observing. Thinking about all the information that you're seeing, letting your brain process it, and being able to communicate effectively what it is you see. Example. Example. Well, I'm an example I, person. Uh, <laughs> um, when you are on the street, or we have a built-in system in New York City in the subway. Uh, you can practice this on the subway all the time. Mm. Some people like to get on the subway, put the buds in their ears, and drown everything out. But the real observer is going to be sitting there. Every time the doors open, they're going to see who gets on, who gets off. Am I safe? How do I get on? How do I get off? It's called situational awareness. And we need to know where we are at all times, and better yet, how we can communicate what our situational awareness is in relationships, on the subway, in the classroom, and most importantly, at work. So it's so interesting. You've consulted for police organizations and who else? FBI? Yep, um, FBI. CEOs, ER doctors, teachers, librarians, parents, and others. Dep Department of Defense, special operations, first responders, hospitals, lawyers, librarians. And when I give you that list across the professional spectrum, I, I have this unique view through a lens, and I see all these people doing their jobs, and I realize they already all have good observation and perception skills. What's falling apart is their ability to effectively communicate what they see, and it's hurting them on the job. So I'm using visual art as the data to try to bridge that gap between what they see and what they communicate and what they type. Visual art. Let's put up um, Jen Eichlin, our executive producer. Jen, put up... Um, piece of art and you'll yeah. explain to us. Excellent. This is a slide that I use in almost all my presentations, whether it's cops or ER doctors. And I tell them that it's a handsome woman of the 18th century, Mrs. Hannah Winthrop. And I tell them it's probably the most important slide in my whole presentation. Now, what could be so important about this slide? What do you see in the slide? I don't know. You see a woman? I see a woman. With a hat on? Yes. She has a bow in her hat. She has a bow on her dress. It's yes. a blue silk dress, lace on her sleeve. Yes. She's sitting in a red upholstered chair, and she's holding two pieces of fruit in each. She's holding a piece of fruit in each hand. And you think, what could that possibly have to do with intelligence or with law enforcement? The problem with the picture is in the bottom one quarter, you see that mahogany table? Yes. And the reflection in the mahogany table of the lace and of the skin of her forearm and of her fingers and even the stem of the neck. Is that a woman? It is a woman. People raise the question. <clears throat> Go ahead, I'm just. It is a woman, glad you raised the question. But the problem is if I asked p 10 people to describe the picture to me, more than five of them would omit the mahogany table. And you say, so what? Who cares about the so table? Why does the table matter? The table matters because it's hiding in plain sight. It's something that's right in front of us and we just choose not to see it. How many times have you said to a colleague or a friend, how did I miss that? And it was hiding right in plain sight. So I'm trying to teach the participants of, in my class and the readers of my book, step back, ask yourself, is there something here I'm missing? And better yet, ask your colleagues, here's my situation, what am I missing? Because someone else might see the table. And I can put up the next one, Jen. All right, here we have a painting from the Frick Collection, where I used to work, one of my favorite paintings in the world. And you look at these two women, mm. and you say, how would you describe to me what's happening? We have all kinds of things happening. We have dialogue. We have some kind of conversation. And if you notice, the woman in yellow who's seated is turned towards the woman in brown. And she has her hand raised to her chin. Is she questioning? Is she being interrupted? What is the woman in brown handing to the woman in yellow? And when I work with inten intelligence analysts, I ask them, what are three questions that are not answered by your visual analysis? Because when you're in surveillance, when you're at crime scenes, it's not about finding answers, it's about how you ask questions. How do you elicit, how do you frame your questions to elicit the information that you need to do your job? So I'm using these works of art as a whole new set of data to show people what they're seeing and what they're missing. In our relationships, mm -hmm. why does this matter? You know, I wish I had a dime for every time someone came up to me after the class and said, you know, I can't wait to use this on the job but I really can't wait to use it when I go home to my wife or my husband, because while I talk about seeing versus observing, there's also hearing versus listening. We all hear our partners, but are we listening to them? And the idea of communicating what you see, what you say to your spouse, may not be what you really mean. And I'm asking people to choose their words wisely because every word counts. For example? For example, uh, I show two pictures. 
and uh, one is of a very large woman and one is a very thin woman. And I once had a doctor say, yeah, the woman in the bottom picture, she's morbidly obese, and the woman in the top picture is perfectly healthy. And I said, you know, doctor, believe it or not, can you look at a picture and tell me someone's perfectly healthy? Why use the word perfectly healthy? Perfectly is highly subjective. Yeah. Because in his eyes, he saw this very thin, uh, very sort of subjectively beautiful, enticing woman. She was naked. She has her hands behind her back. And I said to him, perfectly healthy is so highly subjective. How do you know she's not deaf? How do you know she doesn't have a blood disorder? And he realized that his choice of words was mm. poor. And the reason it's so important is because very, very few things are 100% in our control. Choice of words is one of them. Then why is it that we often use the words, you always, you never do this across the board? And the other person often reacts to that. Because they're, they're words of assumption. And the other words that I uh, ask my class to refrain from using are obviously and clearly. Because we live and work in a very complex it's world. It's obviously true that. <laughs> exactly. And people say it all the time. And you listen to the news. When, when one of those planes disappeared, they say, well, obviously it's terrorism. There's nothing obvious about it. Or clearly there was mechanical failure. Why is it clear? So rather than saying it, it's obviously a case of X, I ask people to say it appears to me to be a case of X because of Y and Z. It forces them to be more descriptive. And you're not assuming what the other person does and doesn't know. And you're telling people to say, listen, the only thing you can be sure of is that's how you see it. Yes, that's exactly. Not that that's the way it is. Someone says, no, that's the way it is. No. And what I, what I tell them, because in all these professions, it behooves them to seek out multiple perspectives because they'll make better decisions when they realize that that's not the way it is and there are other ways to see things. Wow. That's uh, an awful lot to be thinking about, folks, but it's important, mm -hmm. not just in terms of our work, but in terms of our relationship with others. The book is called Visual Intelligence, Sharpen Your Perception change your life. The author is Amy E. Herman. Amy, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You're a great guest. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Stay with us. We'll be right back uh, right after this. I can't say we'll always be back, but we're usually back. <laughs> One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by PSE&G, Wells Fargo, NJM, NJIT, Prudential Financials Global Communications Department, Verizon, and by Summit Medical Group. Promotional support provided by Commerce Magazine. And by NJ Biz, All Business, All New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.